How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the Xenomorph and got harem. Part 2. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. It didn't take him too long to track the scent trails back to their den, a rather sizable compound that he could only assume to have once been inhabited by wave countries missing Daimyu and their court. Now, it was infested with the tyrannical shipping magnate, Gatu, and his army of hired thugs and Ronin, that had been a cancerous thorn in the side of Wave Country's people. He was by no means a fighter for justice, but he knew if they all disappeared, no one would ask questions. HSSS Kage Bunshin. Naruto hissed out as he formed the needed hand seal, causing two dozen copies of himself to pop into existence amongst the leafy tree branches he was in. It was still early morning, so there weren't too many active Ronin roaming the property, but he would still have to move quick before someone sounded an alarm. They all scurried down the trees they were in before sprinting towards the high stone wall that blocked off the perimeter. Easily jumping to the top of the wall, Naruto and his clones rushed the nearest Ronin, a clone pouncing on the hapless man and killing him, before he could even take a breath to scream. Tail flicking from side to side for a brief moment, Naruto continued on towards the main building, while his clones split up to clear out the smaller buildings that most likely housed Gatu's personal little army. Reaching the building, Naruto was about to figure out a way to get through the locked door in front of him when the handle suddenly started turning. Dorsal tubes flaring out as he jumped up to cling to the wall above the door, Naruto glared down at the ronin that stepped out while pelting a kunai into the back of the man's neck, killing him instantly while he crawled inside along the ceiling. He was able to detect if anyone was close by, which they weren't, but he still tried to remain as quiet as he could. Dropping to the ground in the middle of the empty hallway, Naruto formed the hand seal for his Kage Bunshin technique once more, causing another dozen or so copies of himself to appear all around him. HSS. Naruto hissed sharply, causing his clones to surge forward, swarming the building as he heard the first scream come from outside, only for another to sound off from a room down the hall to the left. As more screams were heard, Naruto sensed someone directly above him. Jumping up and clinging to the roof, Naruto charged his hand with chakra before punching through the ceiling and digging his claws into the ankle of the ronin above him, yanking him down through the ceiling before he could retaliate. Pouncing on the man as he hit the ground, Naruto didn't hesitate to bury his fangs in the man's throat, biting clean through his flesh. Not even thinking about it, he swallowed the hunk of flesh before jumping up through the hole he'd made in the ceiling. S.K.R.E.E. -E. Shrieking as he lunged at another freaked out Ronin that had come to investigate what had happened second ago, Naruto ruthlessly killed the man by spearing his tail blade through the man's chest, before immediately leaping from his still falling corpse, just before a crossbow bolt punched through the dying Ronin's sternum. Springing off the ceiling, Naruto landed on top of the crossbowman, his claws rending flesh from bone with ease as the blood splattered against his body. Their corpses would give his young plenty of food to feast upon. He's been gone for almost four days you think we should go looking for him. Hayatari asked of Shinobu, who had been strangely quiet since Naruto first disappeared. While she didn't actively show it, Hayatari had noticed that the Abu Rami heiress was behaving strangely, and he had a feeling it was because of Naruto's absence. Well, not just his absence. Even when they first became a team, Hayatari suspected Shinobu of having a crush on their strange teammate. She was always the first to react whenever he had one of his fainting spells, she was always making sure he was taking care of himself by making him food on a cushion, and she had even had brief moments of emotion around him that she usually did her best to hide, a futile thing when in the company of a Hyuga with the proclaimed all-seeing eyes and their teammate. They still didn't know how to classify him. Regardless, Shinobu had been staying up late each night, sitting at the table as if waiting for Naruto to return at any second. Yesterday and now today, she had spent most of her time outside of their light training just standing on the pier outside Tazuna's home, staring off into the forest. She was also becoming increasingly defensive of Naruto, having already drained Sasuke of chakra once with her Kakechu, knocked the Ichiha out twice with Tajutsu, once during a spar, and once in the house when he got too mouthy for her liking, and had done the same to Kiba once during a spar. The only Genin member of Team 7 that hadn't suffered the heiress's wrath was Yakumo. That was all within the past few days since Naruto had disappeared just before they reached Wave Country. Shinobu said nothing as she stayed standing where she was. Sighing, Hayatari leaned back against the post along the side of the pier, having taken to sitting down, instead of standing like his bug-loving friend and teammate. He was honestly surprised, however, when Naruto stepped out from the tree line a few minutes later, but he wasn't alone. The other person with him stayed behind, remaining hidden in the shadows of a tree. Walking up to his teammates, Naruto nodded towards either one in greeting. As he approached, both Hayatari and Shinobu narrowed their eyes slightly, noticing that something was different about their teammate, but unable to pinpoint just what it was. Where have you been? We've been worried sick about you. 
Hayatari ranted with an indignant pout as he stood up, half-heartedly glaring at his eyeless teammate as he crossed his arms over his chest. Getting only a small, awkward quick of the lips from Naruto as he rubbed the side of his neck, Naruto resisted glancing back towards the forest where Haku was waiting. But the half-dozen of their now fully grown young, true xenomorphs with slight alterations due to their hybrid originating genetics. I am sorry for that. Naruto suddenly apologized with a slight bow, catching both of his teammates off guard, they'd never even heard of Naruto apologizing for anything in the past. So why would he start now? As I'm sure you two and Kurenai-sensei might have guessed, I was out hunting. I lost track of time and became preoccupied by other things, but. The good news is that all threats have been taken care of. All threats? Kurenai inquired as she strolled up to her three students, her ruby eyes leveling a hard gaze on her obsidian skin student. Just how many threats were there to warrant you being AWOL for the past four days? It might be better if I just showed you Naruto mumbled quietly, fidgeting a little bit. Despite feeling whole again and his confidence in himself having grown, Naruto was still rather intimidated by Kurenai for some reason he couldn't quite explain. Quirking an eyebrow curiously, Kurenai crossed her arms below her chest while Naruto pulled out a storage scroll. And promptly unsealed an assortment of items, a Kiri Hunter Nin mask that matched the description of the one Kakashi and his team had encountered, the massive Zanbatu Zabuza had carried, and the clawed gauntlets and horned hit I ate of the Demon Brothers. He pulled out another scroll before simply handing it to Kurenai. I'd suggest not opening that around too many people. Batu was an ugly man in life, but he was even more so in death. You mean to tell me you killed all of them? By yourself. Kurenai asked in shock, more so about him killing an air rank down in level shinobi that had been one of Kiri's seven shinobi swordsmen. Someone that even Kakashi had struggled to fight on equal footing, let alone beat. Even Zabuza. Yes and no. Naruto answered a little cryptically, rubbing the side of his neck awkwardly again as he sealed up the items he had shown them, his tail coiling around his waist as he did. Yes, I killed them by myself, but it wasn't exactly a fair fight. The demon brothers had been sleeping when I killed them, as was Zabuza, who was also bedridden from his fight with Kakashi. The masked hunter Nin had been a little more complicated to take care of, but I dealt with her accordingly. All within a single night. So then where were you the past three days? Kurenai demanded coldly, though not aggressively, she was still a little unnerved by the teen, but she didn't hold it against him. He hadn't exactly been given a choice when it came to his appearance and capabilities. Even still, he needed to answer for his behavior. It took a little longer to track Gatu down than I had first anticipated. Naruto answered, noticing and ignoring the hint of suspicion coming from Shinobu. He wasn't lying, but he wasn't exactly being truthful, either, carefully wording each of his responses to keep anyone from getting suspicious. With the obvious exception of Shinobu, that is. I had actually used more energy dealing with Gatu and his army of Ronin than I did against Zabuza's group. Well I know I've been able to for a long time, I haven't made as many Kage Bunshin as I did at that time. By the end of it all, I was too tired to come back right away, so I spent yesterday resting and recovering the chakra I had lost. What would you have done if we'd been attacked while you were out hunting, Naruto? Kurenai inquired sternly, though with a touch of concern for the boy. He seemed a little remorseful upon hearing her question, so she softened her gaze a little more. What would have happened if you had been badly injured and none of us were there to help you? You need to think about these things more, Naruto. I let you off lightly this time, but no more running off like this. Okay. Just because you were lucky this time, doesn't mean you will be next time. Yes ma'am. Naruto sighed out quietly, bowing his head slightly. Frowning slightly, Kurenai wondered what she was going to do with the boy. At least he was back and he was unharmed. Come on, Hayatari. I want you to come into town with me and Tsunami. Kurenai instructed of her wide-eyed student before heading back to the house, Hayatari following behind her a tad reluctantly. As they left, Naruto lifted his head back up, only to find Shinobu standing only a foot away from him, having not been paying attention to his surroundings properly. Tilting her head down slightly and sliding her sunglasses down a little bit, Shinobu revealed her hazel brown eyes to him with a stubborn look in them. Who is she? Shinobu asked suddenly, getting a slight fanged grimace from Naruto, as his tail fidgeted around his waist nervously. That was when he noticed the tiny beetle that flew off of his back and over to Shinobu, landing on her finger before scurrying back under her clothes. I've had a female Kakechu on you since we left Kanoha, letting me track your movements with my other Kakechu. She's the hunter Nin, isn't she? I won't let you or anyone else harm her. Naruto quietly hissed as his grimace shifted into a slight snarl. Straightening her back out, Shinobu held up a hand placatingly. I'm not concerned with her nor do I wish to harm her. I'm just looking out for you, Naruto Shinobu responded, her tone softening beyond her usual monotone responses, she was being sincerely honest with him, something that soothed his nerves a little. Is that who is waiting for you back in the forest? 
May I meet her? Naruto was silent as he tensed his jaw, weighing his options. He knew Shinobu was a loyal friend and was only looking out for him, like she had said, but he was nervous. The longer Haku went unknown to everyone, the easier it would be to keep her hidden from everyone, his queen mother was not going to become a target for anyone. As badly as he wanted to protect her, though, Naruto knew Shinobu wouldn't back down until she'd accomplished what she wanted. At the same time, he also knew she wouldn't intentionally cause him any problems. Sighing heavily, Naruto grimaced heavier than usual as he turned to the side and motioned for her to follow. Come on. Just be prepared. All right. Nodding wordlessly, Shinobu followed after her teammate as he led her back to the wooded area near Tazuna's home. As soon as the house was no longer in sight and they were relatively deep in the forest, Naruto raised his dorsal tubes before scouring the entire area as best as he could with his omniscient senses. Knowing that they weren't being tailed or spied on, Naruto let out a quiet but shrill cry, signaling Haku to come out of hiding. When she did, Shinobu realized why Naruto had told her to be prepared. Dressed in a pair of crudely tailored baggy pants she had already owned and her baggy robe top held closed with her sash, Haku stepped out from behind the tree she had hid herself behind, her tail coiled around her waist, not unlike how Naruto often did. She's just like you, but how is that possible? Shinobu questioned, more curious than anything as she attempted to take a step closer to the woman, only to have Naruto firmly grasp her shoulder, stopping her instantly. Glancing back at him, she saw him only shake his head. I trust you, Shinobu, so consider yourself lucky to have even met her, but I'm not taking any chances. Naruto explained cautiously, but he had actually stopped her to keep her from provoking their young, the six warrior cast Xenomurfs hidden amongst the trees above them. For now, just be patient, okay? And please not a word of this to anyone. Not Kurunai-sensei, not the Hokage. No one. If word gets out that I can turn others into beings like myself, the villagers will be after my head. I don't think they'll go that far, but you have my word, Naruto. I'll keep her existence a secret from everyone. Shinobu agreed softly, easily noticing the hints of fear that plagued her teammate. Sighing quietly in relief, Naruto let go of her shoulder, he didn't know what he would have done if Shinobu had reacted differently or had been dishonest with him. Focusing back on the woman that shared the same appearance as Naruto, Shinobu bowed slightly in greeting. Hello. I'm Aburami Shinobu, Naruto's teammate and friend. I'm Haku. The Queen Mother answered softly and slowly, still learning how to speak again. While she struggled with speaking, she was fully capable of understanding anything said to her. It was the main reason why she had resisted the urge to introduce herself as Naruto's queen mother, his life mate, he told her not to mention such things around others, should she ever find herself in the company of someone other than him. Seeing as it was for the sake of protecting her and her young, Haku agreed without hesitating. Bowing slightly in return, mostly mimicking Shinobu, Haku finished her brief greeting with an awkward smile. Nice to meet you. The transformation messed with her mind a little bit. Unexpected, but we've been working on it. Naruto remarked, explaining to Shinobu about Haku's slow and sometimes broken speech. She can understand everything just fine. She's just having some difficulty communicating in return. Shinobu could only smile faintly behind the high collar of her top, only to accidentally let a quiet laugh escape her. Cheeks flushing as she looked away to avoid eye contact, Shinobu needlessly adjusted her sunglasses out of slight embarrassment. Sorry it's just, she seems just as awkward as you do when it comes to interacting with others. You have a good point there. Naruto mumbled out admittedly, rubbing his neck slightly as he gave Haku a small, but meaningful smile. Losing her inhibitions about being around Shinobu, Haku grinned happily back at him, revealing her own translucent fangs and teeth from her spot. Glad to see that Haku wasn't nervous or scared anymore, Naruto allowed a more relaxed smile to form on his face. Seeing just how comfortable he was with Haku, Shinobu felt a pang of sadness suddenly tug at her heart, but she was still truly happy for him. He'd found someone. HSS hissing quietly as she frowned a little, Haku watched along with Naruto, as Shinobu bowed once more to her before silently walking away. She'd felt the sudden change in the young woman. At first, Haku had been nervous to be around another person, but it shifted towards feeling a little territorial over her life mate, once she realized that it had been another female with him. After their brief interaction, though, Haku no longer felt threatened by her, but that sudden change in pheromones. It confused her and worried her. Was that right? Yeah for some reason, Shinobu's sudden change in mood and behavior actually concerned her a little bit. Naru. Get her. What? You mean bring her back? Why? Naruto questioned, not really understanding what Haku wanted, but not because of her struggles with speaking. Getting a slightly frustrated hiss from Haku, Naruto grimaced slightly, it was the only way she could fully communicate, but it was only with him, since he and their young were the only ones that could understand her. 
he'd been making her actively speak to help her get better at it, but if she was unsettled enough to actively want Shinobu to come back so badly, Naruto wasn't going to argue. Taking off after his teammate, Naruto easily caught up to her before she could get too far. Shinobu. Hold up. Haku wants to talk to you, I think. What? What about? The Aburami heiress inquired, forcing herself to remain as monotone as possible. She had barely admitted her feelings to herself, so she'd be damned if she started letting others know about it as well. Especially now, knowing that the target of her affections had already been taken from her. Betting only a shrug in response, Shinobu nodded hesitantly before following Naruto back to where Haku was. Almost instantly, Haku walked over and put her hands on either side of Shinobu's head, forcing her to look her in the eye. Ha Haku. What are you? HSS. Haku hissed quietly, though sharply, merely to silence her for a moment. Gingerly plucking Shinobu's sunglasses off her face and returning to what she'd been doing, Haku frowned slightly. Looking at Naruto, Haku hissed quietly at him, getting another grimace from her lover. Go. I'm safe. All right Naruto mumbled hesitantly before walking away, leaving the two females to talk as he wandered back towards the edge of the forest so that he was still close by, but nowhere close enough to listen in on them. Once he was out of hearing range, Haku looked back at Shinobu for a few moments before a knowing smile formed on her face, handing the girl her sunglasses. You love him Haku stated slowly, struggling for a moment. Her smile remained while Shinobu's eyes went wide, unable to believe she'd been found out. Not that fast, not by someone that didn't know her. How? Even before she could voice her questions, Haku let go of her head before walking over to a fallen tree, petting the spot beside her. Fair mm pheromons don't lie. Ph pheromons. Shinobu stuttered out in shock as she slowly walked over and sat down beside the otherworldly looking young woman. You could detect my pheromones. Mm hum. Haku hummed out quietly, though Shinobu noticed the faint purring undertone to it, strange, but alluring, in its own way. Tapping a clawed finger against her own chest, Haku smiled sadly at the Aburami. His life mate. His lover. Then why did you want to talk to me? Shinobu asked quietly, looking down at the ground in front of them, as she felt like leaving again. However, she knew if she tried walking away, Haku would only stop her or have Naruto bring her back again. Sighing quietly, Haku hissed under her breath with frustration while rubbing at her cheek, wishing she could just speak her mind without any issues. Taking a deep breath to calm herself back down, Haku reached over and gently cupped Shinobu's chin, making her look back at her. A frown graced Haku's lips for a moment, noticing the tears threatening to fall from the girl's eyes. Taking a moment to rehearse her next response in her head, Haku regained her slight smile. Relax. Prove yourself. Earn his heart. Haku slowly spoke, watching as the confusion in Shinobu's eyes was dwarfed by the glimmer of hope that came back to her hazel brown her eyes. Haku smiled a little more as she slowly reached down and took the Aburami girl's hand into her own, tilting her head to the side slightly. Maybe share everything. You you don't mean that you and me and him Shinobu stuttered out, her cheeks burning heatedly as she lost her grip on her normally well-contained emotions. Unable to even finish what she was trying to say, Shinobu couldn't resist wanting to just curl up into her trench coat to hide as Haku smiled brightly, nodding in response to her unfinished question. Feeling her blush spread to the rest of her face, Shinobu couldn't resist imagining the kind of life the three of them might be able to have one day, only to shake her head, clearing the image from her mind. I I couldn't possibly I mean, you two are already together and I don't want to. SHH. Haku hushed while delicately placing a finger against Shinobu's lips, silencing the girl from continuing to ramble. Think about. But keep secret. One day surprise him. You are a very strange woman, Haku. Shinobu mumbled around Haku's fingertip, her cheeks burning hot once more. And I'm not even talking about your appearance. Haku simply smiled more as she stood up, pulling Shinobu to her feet in the process. Without another word spoken between them, Haku got behind the Aburami heiress, before pushing her in the direction of the house her lover's team was staying in for the time being. Letting out a momentary and soft shriek to make Shinobu look back at her before she got too far, Haku only held a finger to her lips, signaling to remind her about keeping quiet about what they'd talked about. Watching her leave, Haku didn't quite understand what had prompted her to make such an offer to the girl when she'd only just met her. However, like she had said, pheromones didn't lie. They were automatic bodily functions that reacted to both outside stimuli as well as mental stimuli, fear in the mind caused pheromones tied to fear to be released, while those tied to happiness were released when happy and so on. The same applied when it came to love and lust, both of which having very distinct and very different scent markers when it came to pheromones, Shinobu had only given off pheromones tied to love and then those tied to emotions like heartache and sorrow when she realized that she and Naruto were together. While they'd only just met, Haku felt like she could trust the Aburami girl. She, too, had a hive of her own, after all. 
even if it was on a much smaller scale, size-wise, than her own budding hive. Glancing at the small kakechu beetle crawling on her hand, Haku held it up to see it better before lightly blowing on it, making it fly away. HSSSSS hearing the quiet and prolonged hiss, Haku didn't bother looking at the xenomorph that crawled up beside her, letting her hand rest on its head. She doubted anything would come of her little proposition for a long time, but Haku had faith that something would come of it one day. She had wanted her king to herself, but after seeing another lonely female so desperate for the love she had, only to be denied Haku didn't know for sure, but it kind of reminded her of when the haze in her mind cleared and she found the male she called her life mate. If he hadn't been there or if he hadn't reciprocated her feelings. She didn't even want to think of what could have happened to her. Granted, she wasn't going to be so friendly or generous with every other lonely female out there that developed feelings for her king father, but Shinobu was a special case, in her opinion. I don't think it'll be so bad, to be honest. Haku thought to herself idly as she started heading back to the cave she and Naruto had turned into a temporary hive for her and her brood to reside in while in wave country. Licking her lips lightly, Haku couldn't resist the coy smile from forming as she lightly chewed her bottom lip, the half dozen xenomorph she'd brought with her following closely and protectively. If anything it might be quite enjoyable. Only time will tell, though. It had been a week since he'd returned to his team and like he was every day, Naruto was restless. He wanted to return to Haku, to make sure she was okay and to just be in her presence, but he'd agreed not to leave without permission again. Still, Haku would come by every day to visit him in secret, sometimes even inviting Shinobu to join them or chasing him off to give them some time alone. It was weird and a little off-putting because neither of them would tell him what they did or talked about whenever he wasn't around. At the same time, he was happy that Haku and Shinobu had become such good friends, from what it looked like. Hey. Shinobu greeted softly as she walked across the roof to sit next to him, the tailed and obsidian skin team laying on his back and staring up at the night sky. Drawing her knees to her chest and wrapping her arms around them, Shinobu stared out over the calm waters that formed the strait between fire country and wave country. You're up pretty late tonight. Couldn't sleep. Of course I can't I miss her. Naruto sighed out as he averted his eyeless gaze, looking back towards the forest. As her thoughts momentarily drifted to what Haku had talked to her about a week ago, Shinobu forced her mind elsewhere to keep thinking about it. Instead, she glanced down at Naruto. Even if she could bring herself to admit her feelings to him, she still didn't know how she could do it without making it seem like she was trying to come between them instead of joining them. That was when Naruto glanced back at her, frowning slightly. What's on your mind? Your scent keeps changing every couple seconds. It sits nothing. Don't worry about it. Shinobu mumbled softly, looking back out at the water, she'd almost forgotten that he had the same sensory capabilities as Haku. His frown growing a little bigger, Naruto didn't keep prying. She kept putting off all kinds of scent markers that spanned the entire spectrum, in a manner of speaking, but none of them had any real pattern to them. It was like her emotions kept fluctuating out of her control, which kind of surprised him because she'd always been a very reserved and calm girl that had a good bit of control over her emotions. From what he understood, it was something all Abu Rami had to be good at, since certain strong emotional outbursts could cause the hive of insects in their body to swarm uncontrollably, depending on the emotional outburst they experienced. Still, it was starting to worry him. Her emotional scent markers were constantly changing whenever they were alone or weren't preoccupied with something, and it had been happening ever since she and Haku had spoken in private that first time. Tucking his hands behind his head as he stared up at the moon again, Naruto decided to talk to Haku about it next time he saw her, it was bothering him too much. If something was wrong with her or if there was something troubling her, Naruto wanted to know. He knew he wasn't very helpful in most things outside of a fight, but still. At least knowing might give him an idea of how he could help, if at all. Naruto Shinobu asked quietly and nervously, not even bothering to try hiding her emotions from him at the moment. Can I can I lay down next to you? Um, yeah he mumbled out softly, caught off guard by the strange request. Laying down beside her teammate, Shinobi simply stared up at the night sky with him, but Naruto noticed how much calmer she seemed now, her emotional scent markers no longer fluctuating as randomly as before. So it had something to do with him, it seemed. He couldn't think of anything as to why, but he figured Haku might be able to shed some more light on the matter. After almost half an hour of laying there in silence, however, Naruto noticed that Shinobu had drifted off next to him, rolling over onto her side in her slumber, so that she was facing him, her hand landing on his stomach as she did. He tensed up, his omniscient senses finally pinpointing one of the potential factors about Shinobu's apparent issue. The only thing he could accurately sense from her at the moment was contentment, a peaceful happiness as she laid beside him. She couldn't possibly. Grimacing slightly, Naruto didn't quite know what to do, gently moving her hand off of him so that there wasn't any skin-to-skin -skin contact between them. 
Deciding to just believe it was because she was sleeping, Naruto forced the thoughts from his mind, choosing instead of stare up at the moon again as he waited for sleep to come to him. Eventually. Where do you think you're going this late in the afternoon? Someone demanded from not too far behind him, making him pause in his trek to the wooded area around the house as the sun slowly sunk lower and lower in the sky. Seeing that it was the Achiha, Naruto's grimace turned into a slight snarl, his tail slowly loosening its grip around his waist. His snarl only worsened as he watched Sasuke smirk smugly, knowing an insult was fixing to come his way. Didn't your sensei forbid you from going anywhere, freak? Stop antagonizing me, Achiha. The only thing it'll accomplish is you getting hurt. Besides, Kurinai sensei gave me permission to explore since our mission is almost done. Naruto hissed as he turned back around to keep going, only for Sasuke to grit his teeth, taking his remark as a challenge. Ever since he heard about how Naruto had killed Zabuza, the Achiha had been antagonizing him at every turn over the past couple weeks, usually trying to pick a fight with him. Sensing the spike of aggressive pheromones from Sasuke behind him, Naruto let out a quiet hiss of aggravation. If he wanted a fight so bad, he'll just have to teach the boy not to mess with him. Rushing forward, Sasuke tried landing a punch to Naruto's right side while he wasn't paying attention, aiming for a kidney punch, only for the tail genin to suddenly spin around the offending limb at the last second. Grabbing Sasuke's wrist in his right hand, Naruto braced his left palm against the underside of the Ichiha's elbow, applying just enough pressure to cause pain and make sure his point got across. However, Sasuke tried to counter, kicking off the ground in an attempt to kick him in retaliation. Instantly, his tail whipped around and wrapped itself around Sasuke's leg near the knee, while Naruto pivoted the now airborne Ichiha on his left palm, while twisting Sasuke's wrist slightly. A moment later, Sasuke landed face down on the ground with not just one limb, but two limbs trapped with both on the verge of being dislocated, if just a little more pressure was applied. You going to keep it up or do I have to actually hurt you to get my point across? Naruto hissed at him viciously, trying his best not to drool any, as his anger started triggering his xenomorph instincts. Despite Sasuke's fierce glare and gnashed teeth, the Achiha stopped struggling. Letting him go, Naruto waited until he got to his hands and knees as he tried standing back up before his tail blade shot forward, stopping only a centimeter away from one of Sasuke's eyes. Sasuke froze instantly as a wave of killing intent washed over him, unable to even look up at Naruto's snarling visage as fear rooted him in place, his gaze locked on the black bone blade in front of his face. Do that again and I'll make sure you never awaken your bloodline. Am I clear? Yes Sasuke whispered quietly as he grit his teeth again, glaring at Naruto's back as he started walking away again. How was that freak of nature stronger than him? He was an Achiha, an elite of Konoha. He knew that if he had a Sharingan, he'd be more than capable of putting that abomination in his rightful place, at his feet, groveling for mercy. He needed that kind of power. He needed to avenge his clan, but how could he do that when he couldn't even beat that monster? HSSS Naruto hissed irritably as he walked through the densely wooded area, his tail flailing wildly behind him as he walked, the blade scouring a couple of the trees around him as it grazed their bark. Sensing the presence of his hive members, Naruto started forcing himself to calm down, wrapping his tail around his waist while using the back of his hand to wipe away the slight buildup of saliva that tried dribbling down his chin. That boy was going to get himself a one-way ticket to the morgue back in Konoha if he kept up with his bullshit. HSS. Haku hissed softly as Naruto drew closer, having seen the skirmish from a distance. Without even responding to her worry, Naruto simply walked up to her and wrapped his arms around her, burying his face against her neck. Frowning slightly, Haku simply held him in return, gently and soothingly rubbing the back of his neck and head. After a few moments of silence, she decided to try to distract him from his problems. The bridge is almost finished. We can leave soon. Yeah, Naruto mumbled quietly after a moment before affectionately licking the side of her neck, making Haku shiver slightly with a smile. You're getting better. Mmm. Shinobu has been helping me. The hybrid queen mother answered. Detecting a brief shift in Naruto's pheromones, Haku knew he was still a little irked by their secrecy of what they talked about in private, but there was something different about it compared to how it was in the beginning. He was worried for his teammate, thinking that something was wrong. She smiled slightly before pulling away from her life mate and walking deeper into the forest with him. He was starting to show more concern for the Aburami girl, and Haku decided to take it as a good sign. She's been asking questions about our hive. She's curious. Oh? Naruto mumbled out inquisitively, his tail slowly unwinding from his waist before loosely wrapping itself around Haku's. What's she been asking? She's curious about our children. She's curious about how I became like you. Haku explained, still speaking slow, but her speech wasn't as broken up as it had been a couple weeks ago. Naruto had told her about what he had done to her last week, about how he had forcefully changed her from the human she'd been into the hybrid she was now. 
He had been nervous and a tad scared when he told her, mostly just wanting to get it off his chest. But Haku had done away with his fears almost immediately after, when she said she didn't care about any of that. It was true. Not having any memories before waking up to him in the cave and mating with him, Haku didn't worry herself with how it all started. If it hadn't been for him telling her, she wouldn't have even known her own name. I've been avoiding the details, but she's too determined. She wants to know. H.S. Naruto sighed quietly, the action sounding like a quiet and short hiss. Those are things I'm not so willing to discuss with outsiders, regardless of who they are. I trust her, but in this kind of world, information is power, and I can't risk that kind of power getting into the wrong hands. Next time she starts asking those kinds of questions, please tell her that I want her to stop. Things like that are essentially the same as clan secrets for us. I let her know next time I see her. Haku responded softly before they continued on in a somewhat comfortable silence for a little while, six of their young flanking them on all sides protectively. They kept the rest of their young back at the temporary hive they'd been staying in the past two and a half weeks, mostly to keep them hidden from any watchful eyes in the area. If even rumors began to spread amongst the civilian population, it might eventually draw the attention of a hidden village, even if it was attention from Kanoha, it could prove disastrous for them and their hive. So, where will we go when we all leave this place? There's some kind of detection barrier around the village, so you can't enter the village itself. I can't tell exactly what it is, but I just barely sensed it when me and my team left Kanoha. Naruto answered, surprising Haku a little bit. I haven't felt it anywhere near the forest of death, so you should be okay to go around the village and hide there. You'll just have to watch out for any Anbu patrols along the way, but it shouldn't be too hard if you do it at night. The forest of death. What is it like? Haku inquired curiously. Naruto slowly smiled as he thought about his home. It's technically labeled as a training field, but it's considered too dangerous for anyone under Chunin rank to actively use, so no one uses it. Naruto began to explain, unknowing of how Haku was pleased to sense some happiness from him, as he talked about the forest of death. For us, though you could almost say it's paradise. Plenty of shadows and cracks and crevices, massive trees, plenty of food. So long as our numbers don't grow too large and we don't hunt the wildlife too much, we'll be able to live comfortably for a long time. A couple days before we'd left, I had found a cave that went pretty deep underground, but I had to meet with my team before I could fully explore it. I think it's part of a natural tunnel system. Hopefully, it is. It'll give us plenty of room for our hive to grow and live in. It sounds wonderful. Haku agreed before focusing back ahead of them as their current hive came within sight. Smiling slightly as something occurred to her, Haku looked back towards her lover. The children have been busy while you've been gone. Oh? Naruto intoned curiously, but Haku simply smiled before pulling away from him and running towards the cave entrance. Shaking his head slightly, Naruto half-heartedly gave chase while their young trailed Haku closely, she was the higher priority between the two of them, something Naruto was grateful for being a natural instinct of theirs. Reaching the cave though, Naruto walked in while extending his dorsal tubes, a mental image of the cave, mapping itself out in his head as far as his senses could reach. If he had eyes, they'd have widened in shock. The walls along the tun-like entrance and deeper inside the main chamber were covered in a hard resin-like substance, not unlike what he had used to bind Haku when he transformed her into the queen mother she was now. Oh, my. Mmm. That's not all. Come. Haku remarked as she grabbed his hand, having waited for him at the entrance. Pulling him along behind her, Haku brought him to the main chamber, where a good portion of their young were napping or aimlessly roaming around the hive. Along the sides of the chamber, a couple secondary tunnels had been carved out of the rock and soil, their walls lined with more resin. Even though his senses could reach as far as 200 feet from his spot, Naruto still couldn't see the end of two of the three tunnels, the third leading to what seemed to be another chamber that was about half the size of the hideout Haku and Zabuza previously resided in. They dug these tunnels to make room for themselves. One leads to a feeding chamber where we've been. Storing our kills. Another leads out to the coast nearby. They've been learning how to catch fish there. And this one? Naruto inquired as he walked closer to the secondary chamber he detected. Haku's smile turned a little more sultry as she walked up behind him and slipped under his arm, her tail coiling around his waist and up to his neck. The moment she made physical contact with him, Naruto immediately tasted her arousal, a slight shiver running up his spine as he hissed quietly. Instead of answering, Haku simply led him to the third tunnel before brushing aside the deer skins that blocked off the chamber's entranceway. Inside, there was a collection of animal hides set up in the likeness of a better nest to one side, while a small basin of water sat on the other side, a small hole in the chamber's ceiling directly above it, allowing a little bit of light to filter into the room-like cave, along with letting rain water collect in the basin. What is this? For now our nest. 
Haku whispered as she moved in front of him, sensually caressing the side of his neck and cheek, while slowly dragging her tongue up along the front of his throat. Feeling him shiver and begin to release his own arousal-based pheromones, Haku smirked slightly before leaning in closer to nip at his neck teasingly while undoing her sash with her free hand. Capturing her lips in a heated kiss, Naruto knew she wanted to mate again. If it weren't for the fact that they had a few more days before they'd be leaving Wave Country, he would have been more resistant to the idea, but they had time, and they had food stored away for any new young. They could afford to increase the population of their hive. Sliding his hands up along her flanks as her robe parted, Naruto forced his tongue into Haku's mouth, while gently cupping one of her still engorged breasts, his other hand slipping behind her to untie the knot on the back of her pants just above the base of her tail. While he did that, Haku was already undoing his belt and pants, their respective leggings dropping to the ground at their feet around the same time. Sliding her tail up the back of her robe top, Haku pulled it off of herself, while her mate's hands continued to fondle her low right breast and her left butt cheek. Smiling against his lips, Haku coiled her semi-prehensile tongue around Naruto's, trapping it there as she lifted her left leg, hooking it on his hip as she pressed closer to him. Remembering the animal skin bedding in the corner, Naruto moved his other hand down to her rear before lifting her up, prompting Haku to wrap her other leg around him as he carried her over to the pallet of soft furs. Grinding her hips against his and rubbing her now dripping entrance against his member, Haku broke the kiss with a quiet moan as he laid down on top of her, ignoring the trails of sticky saliva that still bridged the gap between their lips. Biting his head lower, Haku let out a gasping hiss of ecstasy as he immediately started to lightly suckle her lower left breast, the sensation of her nutrient-rich breast milk slowly being drained, causing her body to spasm slightly with a small orgasm, her breath hitching in her throat, her breasts had been so full and tight the past couple weeks, robbed of the attention they craved. But also being the first time she had been milked, Haku found the feeling to be highly arousing, almost torturously so. HSSS. Hissing in pleasure as her life mate continued to suckle, Haku moved her hips a little higher than she'd been doing up until then amongst her grinding, positioning her entrance at her lover's swollen tip. Using her legs to pull him closer to her, Haku arched her back with another euphoric hiss as she was penetrated. After draining her lower left breast of fluid, Naruto detached from the now decup lobe of flesh before moving on to her low right breast. Letting out a quiet shrieking cry of pleasure as she experienced another orgasm, Haku could only cling to him as tight as she could while her lover started thrusting into her. As yet another small orgasm rippled through her, Haku could only pant heavily as her life mate nearly finished draining the second of her lower breasts. She'd been craving more of her king father's love and affection since she'd given birth to her first brood, but with him being forced to stay with his team, she'd been forced to wait. Now that she had him all to herself again, Haku intended to stay interlocked with him for the rest of the evening. She needed him inside of her, she needed her womb bloated with more young again. Feeling him suddenly thicken inside of her, Haku was broken from her thoughts as a cry of pleasure escaped her, but it wasn't from him depositing his seat in her womb. He had actually grown slightly thicker, a little longer. A few minutes later, however, she was rewarded with what she wanted, her lover flooding her womb more heavily than before with his potent seat as his lips wrapped around her upright nipple. Having had her arms wrapped around him, Haku could feel something growing on his back as she fought to catch her breath from the orgasm that tore through her with another shrill cry of pleasure. Forcing herself to focus on it for a moment, she discovered it to be a third set of dorsal tubes that were smaller than the secondary pair on his lower back, only the new pair was situated directly between the longer set on his upper back. Moving a hand to one and gently caressing it, Haku gasped sharply as Naruto started thrusting slower, but more powerfully, as she touched the newly formed dorsal tubes. Her hand sliding up higher along the back of his neck and head, Haku found out that his shallow carapace had grown a little as well, but not by a whole lot. As the last of the fluid was drained from her four voluptuous breasts, Naruto leaned his head back up before hungrily kissing his life mate, wrapping his tongue around Haku's as he flooded her womb a second time. He had faintly noticed the minor changes he had undergone, but he paid them little attention as his mind was clouded with desire for his beloved queen mother. He subconsciously knew it had been caused by the delicately sweet-tasting fluid he drank, but he didn't care. All he could think about was filling his lover's womb with another brood of young. Holding himself up with one hand, Naruto roughly gripped her thigh near her hip with the other, the tips of his claws starting to press into her supple flesh as he kept thrusting into her. Breaking the kiss with a loud hissing groan, Haku felt her entire body tense and lock up, her core knotted even more unbearably than it had gotten last time they'd mated, her body recklessly dumping more and more eggs into her womb. She knew automatically that her second brood was going to be even larger than her first. She just worried about how well her body would be able to handle it, the first one having already strained the limitations of her womb's capacity. Pushing the thoughts out of her head, Haku decided to deal with such an issue when it came around. 
For now, she just wanted to fill her belly with her lover's seed and bask in the sexual bliss of being ravaged by her king father. Letting out a breathy hiss, Naruto twisted his body to the side as he leaned back, dodging Kiba's clawed swipe before driving his fist into the Inuzuka's ribs, stunning him long enough for the tailed hybrid to finish spinning in place to rebalance himself. Using his left arm to bat aside Hayatari's attempted palm thrust, Naruto didn't hesitate to land a solid punch in the middle of the Hugair's chest, knocking the wind out of him and knocking him back. Lashing out with a mule kick behind him, Kiba was launched back as Naruto's foot connected with his stomach. Grabbing his ankle while his leg was still extended, Shinobu pulled his leg further back to throw him off balance, but it wasn't as effective as she'd hoped, as Naruto simply dropped to the ground on all fours to force her into releasing him before lunging forward, shoulder tackling Sasuke back before the Ichiha could complete his attempted spinning kick. Having wrapped his tail around Shinobu's leg in the process, the Aburami heiress was yanked to the ground as he lunged at Sok before being swung around by the deceptively strong limb a second later. Yakumo was caught off guard as Shinobu collided with her, knocking them both to the ground. Why did you give them permission to do this? Kurinai asked quietly as she and Kakashi watched their students bar in a five-on-one tojutsu match against Naruto. Lone eye half-lidded, Kakashi feigned boredom as he watched. In reality, he was watching Naruto, beepizing the tail genin's fighting style, it was really something if he could hold off five enemies at once. Without being touched, at that. Don't look at me. Naruto is the one that challenged everyone. I'm just spectating and making sure no one takes things too far. Kakashi countered with a brief glance at the red-eyed Jounin, his response surprising the game jutsu specialist. Looking back towards the fight, Kakashi continued. When he came back from wherever he ran off to last night, he challenged them all to a tojutsu only spar, saying something about wanting to test himself. Still, it makes me wonder have you taught him anything regarding tojutsu? No, why? Kurinai inquired, growing a little suspicious. Because they haven't managed to land a single hit on him yet, and they've been going at it for almost 20 minutes. Kakashi answered flatly, shocking Kurinai once more. They watched in silence for a moment as Naruto continued to weave between their attacks, countering them at every turn. It might have just been because of his absent mendedness back in Konoha, but he'd never showed that level of skill whenever he sparred with his teammates before. He's gotten more aggressive compared to how he was when your team first arrived here. Any idea why? No. Could it be the Kurinai trailed off for a moment, but Kakashi shook his head, it wasn't the QP sealed inside of him. The one-eyed Jounin would have sensed its chakra if it was. If not that, I can only think that it has something to do with his unique biology. But most likely. Look at his back. Kakashi mumbled, nodding his head towards the brawl. Looking over, Kurinai was a little confused before noticing the two new ridges on his upper back between his shoulders, they hadn't been there yesterday. It didn't seem like much, but she knew those were what Naruto called dorsal tubes, what they did and how they worked, she didn't know, but she knew they didn't just sprout randomly. I don't know much about what was done to him, but I'm guessing he's growing up, in a manner of speaking. I don't exactly know how to word it. I'm no scientist or doctor. From the looks of things, though, I don't think the changes are just physical. Personally, I think it's a good thing that he's become a little more aggressive, so long as it doesn't get any worse. He always seemed kind of soft when he was still attending the academy. If he was soft, then why was he never bullied like Hayatari had been? Kurinai asked rhetorically, mostly just thinking out loud. Kakashi still shrugged slightly before gesturing towards the tail genin in question. Look at him. Even though he always wore a hooded cloak and mask, he's almost a foot taller than most of his old classmates. Plus, from what his file says, he packs one hell of a punch. Kakashi reasoned. If you were a bully back in the academy, would you have tried picking a fight with someone like that? No I suppose I wouldn't have. Kurinai mumbled quietly, her thoughts focusing around the new changes in her student that Kakashi had pointed out to her. She'll try to figure everything out once they return to Konoha, the two teams having planned to leave tomorrow. HSSHSSHSS unintentionally hissing quietly as he panted, Naruto looked around to find his two teammates and the three members of Team 7 laying on the ground, each one hurting too much from the blows they'd taken to keep the spar going. Helping his teammates up to their feet, Naruto didn't say anything, now knowing that the changes he'd undergone last night went far deeper than just some cosmetic adjustments and a larger field of view. It wasn't by a huge margin, but he was stronger now, faster, his reaction time was quicker, his awareness of his immediate surroundings while fighting was sharper, and he was even a tiny bit more flexible than before. That was just what he had figured out during the fight, at that. As Naruto offered to a hand to help him up to his feet, Kiba stared up at him with a slight glare before heaving a sigh and grasping the offered hand. Swallowing his pride as Naruto pulled him up, Kiba half-heartedly glared off to the side, still a little stubborn. That was a good fight. You should teach me some of those moves sometime. Maybe one day. 
Naruto mumbled back in reply, while Shinobu went to help Kikumo to her feet. When Naruto went to help Sasuke to his feet, however, the Achiha only glared at him and slapped his hand away, getting up on his own. Shaking his head at Sasuke's stubborn arrogance, Naruto walked over to Hayatari, who was already on his feet and still holding his chest where he'd been hit earlier. You alright? Yeah, I'm okay. The Hugh I eye smiled sheepishly as he let out a weak laugh. You couldn't have held back a little bit against us. What do you mean? I was holding back. Naruto responded in honest confusion, frowning slightly. He really had been holding back, not wanting to seriously injure any of them. Normally, he would have struck with his claws, not his fists. Misunderstanding each other, Naruto didn't realize that Hayatari had meant pulling his punches a little bit, while Hayatari could only gawk at him in shock, thinking he was stronger than he really was. What? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Hayatari mumbled a little nervously as he started walking back towards the house, Shinobu following him with Yakumo and Kiba. Looking towards Sasuke, Naruto watched as the Achiha simply went into the forest for more personal training. Letting out a hiss-like sigh, Naruto shook his head at him again before heading back towards the house with the others. He tried. He honestly tried being nice to the Achiha. If he didn't want to show that same amount of respect in return, then he could take his Mahdi bullshit elsewhere. As they all made their way back to the house, Kakashi nodded towards Kurinai before shuffling after Sasuke, leaving the red-eyed woman to stare at the back of her strangest student. HSSS Haku could only hiss quietly in mild discomfort as she lounged amongst the animal hides, exhausted and slowly recovering from giving birth to nearly twice the number of young with her second brood. Thankful that the skin and flesh of her stomach was naturally semi-elastic to a degree, Haku lightly rubbed her tender and now deflated abdomen. She'll be back to normal after a few hours of rest, but until then, she was stuck with the flabby extra skin on her stomach. She wasn't a vain female, but she still took pride in her looks, which was why she was glad she was too worn out to even move from the bed, she'd needed a couple of her children from her first brood to help her just to get to her little nest for some sleep. How are you feeling? Naruto inquired as he walked in unexpectedly, surprising Haku a little bit. Noticing it, he grimaced slightly while sitting down beside her. I snuck out for a little bit. Kurinai-sensei won't be happy when she figures out I left, but I wanted to check in on you for a little bit. You're going to be the death of me one day you know that. Haku groaned quietly in protest as she inched closer to him, resting her head in his lap. Knowing she was just teasing, Naruto didn't think anything of it as he gently brushed his fingers along her cheek, getting a tired smile from her. Groaning slightly as she curled up a little bit again, Haku nuzzled his leg slightly while her tail looped around her body. Too many I felt like I was going to explode if I hadn't given birth when I did. HSS Naruto sighed quietly, not really knowing what to say while at the same time, he felt bad for putting her through so much pain. He was quickly snapped out of his thoughts when Haku swatted him across the head with her tail blade, the Queen Mother, not even bothering to move any other part of her body as she laid there. Stop. Don't feel guilty. Technically I did this to myself. Haku grumbled quietly as Naruto grimaced a little bit, but he stopped giving off negative pheromones. That was when she let out a whine-like hiss as she cuddled a little closer to him. If only I didn't get pregnant every time we made it or at least not with so many all at once. Do you think a contraceptive would help any? Naruto suggested a little awkwardly, getting another weak smile from Haku as she thought about it. It might work, but it'd have to be a really strong one. If it could just cut down on the size of her broods, at the very least, it would do her wonders. After her first brood, Haku had actually craved him more than she desired to reproduce again, but their bodies obviously didn't feel the same way about it. Hers, especially. Maybe. We can look into it more when we get to our new home. For now I need to rest. Haku mumbled before yawning tiredly. Pawing at him expectantly, Haku waited until he laid down before crawling up a little higher and laying back down beside him, her head resting on his shoulder while she draped a leg over his, a hand resting on his chest over his heart. Smiling sleepily as she felt his tail loosely entwine itself with hers, Haku let herself relax, quickly drifting off to sleep beside her life mate. Simply laying there, Naruto held her clothes with a hand on her hip, enjoying the gentle warmth radiating off of her naked body. He still couldn't figure out what it was that had been bothering Shinobu recently. He didn't know why, but it just kept gnawing away at the back of his mind. He'd been getting better at keeping his mind off of it while around Haku to keep her from noticing any distinct changes in his pheromones, the only reason he was even letting himself think about it now was because Haku had fallen asleep already. Thinking back to that night on top of Tazuna's house, Naruto remembered the contentment Shinobu had felt just from being next to him. That was what had been really plaguing his mind all week. Was it really just because she had been sleeping when she touched him? Or was it something else? He wanted to know, almost desperately so, but he didn't want to find out that it was what he thought it was at the same time. 
If Shinobu really did have feelings for him it would explain why she had seemed so upset when she left after meeting Haku. Still, that brought up a question as to what they had talked about shortly after that, when Haku made him leave the two of them alone for a little bit. Not only that, he didn't really know how to feel about the whole thing. He would be lying if he said he wasn't a little interested in her and he didn't want to hurt Shinobu, but he was already with Haku and he'd be damned if he ever did anything to hurt her. He could never abandon her. Just what am I going to do about this mess? Naruto mentally asked himself before looking down at Haku and smiling at how peaceful she looked as she slept. Sighing quietly, he decided to get some rest while he could. He'd be up by first light in the morning, so he had enough time to get back to Tazuna's before everyone else would be getting up. Sighing quietly as he left the administration building with his mission pay in hand, Naruto was relieved to know that Haku and their children made it safely to the forest of death without issue, the Kage Bunshin he'd sent with them to act as a guide, having dispelled once they'd reached the cave, he told his life mate about shortly after his team finished handing in their mission reports. Having been the one that did most of the work, though, Naruto's report was really the only one that had truly mattered in the end. Since Haku had told him not to worry about rushing back right away, Naruto was actually at a bit of a loss as to what he should do next. Idly fiddling with the amber gem dangling from around his neck, Naruto blatantly ignored the bewildered stares he was getting from everyone as he walked down the road, his tail loosely coiled around his waist. Prior to becoming a genin, he had only gone out in public with his old cloak and mask on at all times. Since Tensei's passing and becoming a part of Team 8, he had never really gone out, usually keeping to himself in the forest of death or training. Even when he would go to meet up with his team, he always went unseen, sticking to the shadows and untrafficked alleyways. The only time he even ran across the rooftops was when he was in a rush, which had been a very rare occurrence for him, since he never really did anything. Remembering that the Sande Ami had set him up with an apartment a while back, Naruto decided to check it out to see if he still owned it or if it had been rented out to someone else already. It had been almost two months, so he wouldn't be surprised if it had been. It took him a little while to remember the address, but he eventually found it, honestly a little surprised to find that it was still unoccupied. Unlocking the door and stepping inside, Naruto found the apartment to be minimally furnished with a couch off to the side, a small table and a single chair near the kitchenette, a refrigerator, a microwave, and a stovetop oven, but not much else that he could see at the moment. Sitting on the table, though, were two items he hadn't seen in a while. Walking over, Naruto gingerly picked up one of the items. Lightly running a claw across the bone white and featureless Hunter Nin style mask, Naruto frowned slightly as nostalgia tried to invade his thoughts. Sighing quietly, he set it back down on the table beside his old cloak. No more. He wasn't going to hide himself from anyone ever again. Noticing something, though, he hesitantly lifted the cloak before pulling out the item hidden underneath it. Almost instantly, he started shaking a little bit, his lips quivering into a frown as he cursed his inability to cry. It was a picture of Tensei, caught mid-laugh as she held a then seven-year-old Naruto in her arms. Slowly sinking to his knees on the floor, Naruto let his hand fall to his side as he stared down at the ground blankly. Shaking a little more than before, Naruto buried his eyeless face in his hands, his expression shifting back and forth between a grieving frown and a frustrated snarl, his breaths coming in quick hissing gasps. Why did it have to be her? Why did it have to be his queen mother that died that night? Why did God, should it exist, hate him so much? Why did he have to suffer so much? His emotions running rampant, Naruto didn't notice how his tail was starting to twitch around his waist with his anger and sorrow and pain. He didn't notice how his lips curled into a vicious snarl as his frustration started to become too much for him. Why? First, he was turned into a monster when he was only a baby by a deranged warmongering lunatic. Robbed of his humanity, Tensei took him in and tried to teach him how to be human again, tried to give him as normal of a life as she could only to be murdered on what should have been one of the happiest nights of their lives. Even though he ruthlessly killed her murderers not long after, Naruto still couldn't. He still couldn't find closure. S-K-R-E-E. -E. He shrieked before driving his fist into the floor, breaking the wooden board, while his tail flailed out and smashed through three of the table's legs, sending it flying across the kitchenette in the process. Hissing furiously, Naruto simply stayed where he was, shivering. He never noticed the presence outside the apartment. Naruto. Shinobu gasped in shock, having tracked him down to the apartment via one of her female kakechu to see if he wanted to do something that afternoon, only to hear him shriek before something was smashed inside just as she reached the door. Throwing the door open as she rushed through it and hastily closed it behind her, Shinobu ran over to Naruto, only to lean back to avoid Naruto's flailing tail as it swung back around. Once it had passed by, she immediately closed the distance between them and wrapped her arms around him, stopping him mid-punch as he beeped his hand back to hit the ground again. It's okay, Naruto. Calm down. S-H-H-H. 
HSS hissing quietly, Naruto slowly turned around in her arms before suddenly wrapping his own around her, his tail wrapping around the both of them, as he buried his face against her shoulder. Feeling him shaking almost uncontrollably, Shinobu became extremely worried for him. He'd never been so explosively emotional before, making her wonder what it was that had set him off. Holding him tightly as he hissed with every breath, Shinobu gently rubbed his back, her soft-skinned hand caressing his flattened dorsal tubes. Slowly soothed by the action, Naruto simply held her, his fangs gnashed and lips curled into a snarl, as he struggled to calm down, still shivering with his pent-up emotions. Oh, Naruto she thought to herself with worry as she saw the photograph on the ground. Back when they had first been put on the same team, Kurinai had informed her and Hayatari about how Naruto had just lost his mother the night after they all graduated from the academy. It was something that was never talked about amongst them or even hinted at, but Shinobu knew from his current behavior that Naruto hadn't dealt with the emotional backlash of that night. Not until now, that is. SHHH I'm right here, Naruto. I've got you. You're okay. I miss her Naruto hissed out quietly, clinging to Shinobu for dear life as he kept shaking. I miss her so much. I know you do, Naruto. I know. She cooed softly, trying her best to console him. Stashing the picture in a pocket, Shinobu started trying to get him to stand up, succeeding after a few attempts. Come on. Let's get you back to Haku. Okay. Naruto could only nod his head slightly against her shoulder before slowly and reluctantly pulling away from her, the Aburami heiress taking a moment to grab the cloak and mask on the ground before leading him out of the apartment. He took a moment to lock the door back up before they left, heading straight for the forest of death. As they took to the rooftops to avoid everyone in the streets, Shinobu could only stare at Naruto with concern, he was still shaking, even as he ran. She was desperate to help him, somehow, but she couldn't think of how she could do that. The journey hadn't taken them long, neither saying anything the entire time, but by the time they reached a cave deep inside the forest, Shinobu was relieved to see Haku already waiting for them at the entrance, a handful of warriors staying close to her. What happened? Haku asked worriedly and urgently, having sensed his pain through their connection, as Naruto simply disappeared into the cave without acknowledging her presence, leaving the two females to talk, as he sought out a dark quiet corner to seclude himself in for a while. I felt his pain. What happened to him? I think it has something to do with this Shinobu answered as she passed the photograph she'd found over to Haku. Gently taking it, Haku frowned a little bit, instantly recognizing both Naruto and the gem hanging from the woman's neck, it was the same one he always wore. I don't think you know, but back when we all graduated from the academy and became genin, Naruto. Naruto's adopted mother died. I don't know the details of what had happened, but from what Kurinai-sensei told us a while back, he's been a mess ever since. At least until he found you. I think when he saw the photo, he finally started going through the grieving process. His adopted mother. Haku whispered quietly. Naruto had mentioned something about losing a queen mother, but never talked about her. Now, Haku knew who she was, the woman had been more a mother to him than a queen, but he still thought of her as his queen mother. How bad was it? He was tearing up an apartment when I got there. I think it was his since he had a key to it. Shinobu answered softly as she took the picture back and put it away again. After a moment, though, Shinobu looked back to Haku. Can can I stay with him for a little while? Please. I don't want to leave him while he's like this. Of course. Come. Haku agreed before gesturing for her to follow, leading Shinobu into the cavern. It was quite dark, prompting Shinobu to take her sunglasses off, but once her eyes adjusted, she was able to see at least decent enough to see most of the things near her. Despite her worry for Naruto, Shinobu was surprised to see the walls covered in what looked like resin of some sort, most of it looking fresh. They'd only been in Kanoha for a handful of hours, and they were already turning it into a hive. The tunnel went down into the ground at an angle, going deeper and deeper for a good distance. After a couple minutes of walking, they came upon a rather large and open chamber, where most of the Xenomorph warriors were gathered, some busying themselves with digging out tunnels while others were on the walls, regurgitating what looked like more resin that they then used to further coat the chamber's walls and ceiling. In the ceiling, a handful of small holes had been dug out to allow airflow and a little bit of light to filter into the massive chamber. Shinobu guessed that they could easily fit a decently sized house in the chamber, if they wanted to. He went this way. Haku mumbled, catching Shinobu's attention as she started leading her down another tunnel close by. It was shorter than the entranceway and actually went back up a little bit before opening up into another chamber, only it wasn't much bigger than the one Naruto and Haku had used back in Wave Country. Having brought all of the animal hides they'd collected back in Wave Country, Haku had set up her nest in the back again, but that was about all the cave had to offer at the moment, most of her time had been spent digging it all out with a few of her children's help, while others relocated the soil and rock that had been removed. Curled up amongst the furs, Naruto didn't move or acknowledge that he even knew they were there, his back kept to them. 
Aku didn't anything as she put a hand on Shinobu's upper back and gently nudged her towards him. While she wanted to help console her lover, Haku knew that if she did, it would rob Shinobu of an opportunity to prove herself to him. She still had things to take care of elsewhere in the cave, anyways. Glancing back at Haku uncertainly, Shinobu was only ushered on while the Queen Mother turned to leave, giving them plenty of privacy. Looking back towards Naruto, Shinobu slowly walked over to the nest and set down the folded up cloak and mask she'd taken from the apartment. Hesitating for a moment, Shinobu started unbuttoning her trench coat, wanting to get a little more comfortable in the slightly humid feeling cave. Taking it off and dropping it on the ground at the edge of the nest along with her sandals, Shinobu moved over to Naruto and laid down beside him. He still didn't move, but she could see that he was still shaking. Come here. She whispered softly, gently touching his shoulder. Rolling over so that he was facing her, Naruto didn't hesitate to wrap his arms around her, burying his face against her plump bosom, making her blush heavily at the contact, but she was otherwise unbothered by it, she knew he was hurting inside. Wrapping her arms around him, she gently rubbed the back of his neck and head just beneath his carapace, closing her eyes as she held him close. It's okay, Naruto I'm right here. Where did Haku go? He whispered quietly, the emotional anguish in his voice instantly dispersing her blush as she focused on helping him feel better before thinking of anything else. Even her own feelings for him would have to wait. She wanted to give us some time alone for a little bit. Shinobu responded honestly, knowing just from Haku's actions earlier that it was exactly what the hybrid queen mother wanted. Don't worry. She'll be back eventually. HSS Naruto hissed quietly, shivering less and less as time passed, the warmth of Shinobu's body slowly calming him down. Nuzzling her chest slightly, Naruto noticed, but ignored the slight spike of various pheromones from Shinobu as he relaxed, holding her closer to him as he curled up a little bit more. Blushing a little bit again, Shinobu could only stare down at him in a mix of slight embarrassment and a little bit of happiness as he started calming back down. Curling around him a little bit as well, Shinobu rested her cheek on top of his head as she held him, still rubbing his neck soothingly. Little did she know, but Shinobu had started giving off pheromones tied in with love as she held him, something Naruto instantly picked up on, but didn't react to. It still helped distract him from thinking about Tensei. It wasn't a fluke back on the roof that night. He thought to himself in slight shock, though gratefully as he tightened his embrace a little bit. His tail subconsciously moved, gently forcing itself between Shinobu's legs before wrapping around her thigh and then around her waist, lightly squeezing her in both regions. A little surprised by the action, Shinobu simply let it happen, even as her blush darkened a little bit from the intimacy of the admittedly strange embrace. It was actually kind of comfortable, oddly enough. Detecting her love-based pheromones grow a little stronger, while those tied to contentment and hope joined in, Naruto didn't really know what to do about it. She actually loves me. He wasn't going to do the same thing he'd done to Haku, though. He'd never be able to bring himself to do such a thing to her. It would erase Shinobu's memories, erase what made her her, like it had with Haku. He didn't want the woman in his arms to ever change. She was too caring, especially of him. It all made sense now, thinking about her behavior when they'd first become a part of teammate. Almost every other day, she would ask him if he had eaten or if he had been getting enough sleep. Whenever he would randomly faint during team training or the occasional D-rank mission, he always woke up with his head in her lap, the air around her heavy with worry for him. The only thing he couldn't figure out was why. Why did she have feelings for him? And why were they so strong? He was broken from his thoughts as Shinobu started to quietly hum a lullaby he was unfamiliar with, her hand gently rubbing his upper back as she held him. Combined with the warmth of her body, Naruto found himself slowly struggling to stay conscious as she sang him to sleep, slowly succumbing to his emotional exhaustion. Smiling warmly as she felt him give a jaw-cracking yawn against her stomach, Shinobu continued humming the lullaby her mother used to sing to her when she was a little girl. Smiling more as he nuzzled his face against her breast again, Shinobu simply continued, glad to see that he was calming back down. It wasn't long before he fell asleep, his tail's grip on her thigh and waist tightening a little, but she kept humming the lullaby for a little longer, wanting to finish the song. All throughout their time at the academy, Shinobu had been the only one to realize that Naruto had actually been quite nervous and a little scared back then. Her Kakechu had been able to pick up on some of his pheromone signals over the years, relaying to her what he was always feeling. She had guessed that because of his usual attire consisting of a cloak that hid his entire body and a mask that covered his face, Naruto was scared of people seeing what he really looked like, not wanting to be feared or hated by his peers. She had felt a sort of kinship with him in that regard, seeing as most people were always unsettled upon discovering that she and her clansmen housed entire hives of insects inside their bodies. Like him, she'd suffered from a lack of friends back then. After a while, though, she saw the kind of person he was, watching as he would defend Hayatari all the time whenever the timid Hyuga boy would get bullied. 
or whenever anyone got bullied around him. Even back then, she knew he had a good heart. While it had become stained with his recent struggles and hardships, Shinobu had faith in him. While he might look like a monster in the eyes of others and might act like one on a cashin, Shinobu knew that he wasn't one. It hadn't been until just a month before they had all graduated to Jenin that she realized her feelings for him. They hadn't been much more than a fleeting thought back then, but in the past couple months, they'd grown stronger with each passing day. Especially so once they'd been put on the same team. His constant fainting spells worried her greatly, indirectly causing her feelings for him to grow little by little. When she first learned that he hadn't been eating much of anything almost a week after becoming a team, Shinobu had taken it upon herself to make sure he ate something at least every couple days, occasionally bringing him something to eat for their lunch breaks. It was around that time when she learned that he only ate meat, mostly because his body didn't gain any meaningly nutrients from any other kinds of food. Thankfully, he'd been doing better about eating since Wave Country. What he'd been eating, she didn't know, but he was still healthy, and that's all she cared about. I knew I made the right choice with her. Haku thought to herself with a smile, watching them from the edge of the chamber that would become hers and Naruto's nest, as she returned from checking on the cave system's various other renovations. Making her way over to them, Haku smiled warmly at Shinobu as she looked up at her. Laying down behind Naruto, Haku slipped an arm under Shinobu's head to act as a pillow for her, while using her other hand to cut the Aburami girl's chin. Tilting her head back slightly, Haku surprised her by gently kissing her on the lips, taking advantage of Shinobu's shock to tenderly slip her tongue into her mouth for a brief moment, sensually rubbing the oral muscle against Shinobu's. Caressing Shinobu's warm and flushed cheek as she slowly broke the kiss, Haku smiled warmly again before whispering quietly. I did say that we would share everything didn't I? Shinobu could only look away from her, too embarrassed by Haku's intimacy to say anything. Before she could do anything else, though, Haku turned her face back to her before kissing her a second time, this time holding it for several long seconds, as her prehensile tongue wormed its way into her mouth. This time, Shinobu simply let it happen, unknowing of the Queen Mother's pheromone-laced saliva. Moaning softly into the lip lock, Shinobu was surprised with herself as she actually started to return the kiss, albeit hesitantly and nervously. Cheeks flushed heavily once more, Shinobu was left a little out of breath as they broke apart, staring at Haku with uncertainty and internal conflict, as the obsidian-skinned woman smiled at her again. Welcome to the hive Haku whispered softly with one last tender kiss on the lips before getting comfortable again, her hand resting on Naruto's side. As Shinobu got comfortable again, Haku could only smile lovingly as the girl hesitantly grabbed her hand, holding it gently. Giving Shinobu's fingers a reassuring squeeze, Haku let herself relax completely, while Shinobu lightly nibbled on her bottom lip, still dealing with her inner conflict. She had honestly thought Haku had only been talking about sharing Naruto between them, not each other. She didn't quite know how to feel about it at the moment, having never really been into other girls. Still, something about that kiss it had gotten her a little excited, sexually, and she couldn't figure out why. She knew one thing for sure, though, she was happy. Truly happy. Cheeks nearly glowing, Shinobu smiled brightly as she closed her eyes and cuddled a little closer to Naruto, resting her head on Haku's outstretched arm. Feeling something brushing against her leg again, Shinobu hesitantly lifted it a little bit, letting Haku's tail join Naruto's as it coiled around her calf and thigh, gently squeezing her just as Naruto's was. Relaxing once more, Shinobu decided to worry about everything that had happened when she woke up from their group nap. I'm sorry you had to see me like that yesterday. Naruto mumbled quietly with a slight frown, a little ashamed of his suddenly violent outburst back in his unused apartment. Shinobu could only frown a little bit herself, holding Naruto closer to her. I don't really know how to control my emotions sometimes. I struggle with some of them sometimes. SHH. It's okay, Naruto. I'm just glad to have been there when I was. Shinobu whispered softly, gently running her hand over one of his folded down dorsal tubes. Naruto simply nuzzled his cheek against her breast as he inched a little closer to her, slowly taking a deep breath as he relaxed a little more. There's no telling how much worse it could have turned out if I hadn't been there. They hadn't woken up until late into the night only a few hours before sunrise, Haku having departed a little while ago to check on the hive's progress. Shinobu had gotten comfortable leaning back against the piled up animal furs along the wall, before Naruto had hesitantly curled up beside her again, resting his head against her chest once more with a hand lazily resting on her stomach, his tail once more coiled around her thigh and waist. Not really knowing how to react to how affectionate and cuddly he was being, Shinobu had simply let it happen, wrapping an arm around him. She could only assume that it was because of his insecurities, which didn't bother her in the slightest. If it made him feel better, she had no problems with letting him do it. Her name was Jenku Tensei. She had been one of the Anbu that found me back when I was only a few years old. Naruto quietly mumbled after a few minutes of silence. She took me in almost immediately. She helped me. 
She took care of me. She she. It's okay, Naruto. Take you time. Shinobu whispered soothingly, resting her cheek on top of Naruto's head as she felt him start to shake slightly. Feeling his tail shift and squeeze her leg again, Shinobu had a moment of hesitance again before lightly kissing the top of his head, something that caused his shivering to slowly fade away before tightening his hold on her. They were quiet for a few more moments before Naruto took a deep breath. She helped me learn to walk, taught me how to speak, taught me how to read and write, she taught me how to be human. Everything I know is because of her. He continued after a couple more moments, no longer sounding so pained, but still hurting from talking about her. However, he kept talking as he felt the pain of her death finally start to subside the more he talked about her. She taught me how to use my chakra and how to fight. She taught me the ninjutsu techniques I know today. She gave me her necklace, something she said had been an heirloom that had been passed down in her family for years. She gave it to me on my ninth birthday, saying that while I wasn't her son by birth, I was still her little boy, that's why I still go by her family name. Because she was my mother. Shinobu didn't say anything as she held Naruto a little tighter as he started shivering again, bringing her other arm around to gently cradle his head against her chest, the two of them settling into a somewhat comfortable silence after that. Almost two months after her passing, Naruto was finally letting himself mourn Tensei's death. Still, she had to admit that he was taking it a lot easier than she had expected. With the exception of his short-lived rampage back in the apartment, he'd been surprisingly docile the entire time. Lacking eyes and any form of tear ducts, though, she figured it was mostly because he was physically incapable of crying or even showing emotion like everyone else could. Shinobu how long have you had feelings for me? Naruto suddenly asked, making her tense up nervously at the unexpected question. How did you Shinobu went to ask how he knew, only to remember something Haku had told her back in Wave Country, pheromones don't lie. Still nervous, Shinobu looked away awkwardly as her cheeks flushed slightly. Detecting a spike of fear from her, Naruto instinctively tightened his grip around her thigh with his tail as his hand on her stomach moved to wrap around her side, holding her close. Reassured a little bit by his subtle attempts to calm her, Shinobu took a moment to calm herself down a bit before answering. For for a little while now. It started as just a passing thought a while back, but. When we were put on the same team and you fainted that first time, I just I was so worried about you out of nowhere. It took me a little bit, but I realized that my feelings for you weren't something I could just dismiss or ignore. So that's why you kept trying to take care of me back then Naruto mumbled quietly. For a moment, Shinobu was a little scared that he might not feel the same way for her because of his love for Haku, only to feel his hold on her shift a little bit. Coiling more of his tail around her leg, Naruto put his hand on her hip while pulling her closer to him, his head still resting on her chest. You know I heard you and Haku last night. What are you talking about? Shinobu stuttered out quietly, trying to play it off while looking off to the side in embarrassment as her cheeks burned a deep scarlet. Feeling him shift his position a little bit again, Shinobu was a little surprised when he leaned up and buried his face against her neck, only to lightly lick her neck affectionately. Shinobu shivered slightly at the contact, it was strange, but nothing too bad. I know Haku said it last night, but Naruto paused for a moment, feeling a tad awkward himself as he nuzzled her neck slightly. If Haku wanted her to join them, he wasn't about to argue it. Welcome to the hive, Shinobu. She was quiet for a moment before a small, shy smile tugged at her lips. Leaning her head against his once more, Shinobu held him a little tighter in return. You two are just so strange sometimes. You know that, right? HSS Naruto hissed quietly as he started getting comfortable again. Knowing she'd have to figure out something to tell her father about why she'd been gone all night, Shinobu sighed quietly, but she was too content with simply laying there with Naruto to move. Picking up on the momentary scent markers, Naruto grimaced slightly. You have to go, don't you? As much as I'd like to stay like this, I do. My father is probably wondering where I've been all night. Shinobu sighed again, but she knew she wasn't the only one displeased with it when Naruto slowly and hesitantly pulled away from her and sat up, letting her get up. Moving to the edge of the nest, Shinobu put her sandals back on before standing up, slipping her trench coat back on afterwards. Could I come by again? Maybe later this week, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Naruto answered quietly, stuttering slightly at first as he rubbed the back of his neck awkwardly. You'll always be welcome here. Smiling shyly, Shinobu gave him a slight wave, feeling a little awkward herself, before leaving the chamber. Sitting there, Naruto grimaced slightly again, still not sure of how to feel about the situation. He now knew what it was that she and Haku had spoken about in private when they first met each other, and it was clear to him that Haku welcomed her into the mix, but. Could he actually do it? Could he really find it in himself to love two women simultaneously? HSSS letting out long hissing sigh, Naruto forced himself to his feet while coiling his tail around his waist and shoving his hands in his pocket. 
Just as he was about to wander the hive, however, Naruto noticed something and glanced down at it, finding the cloak and mask and the photo of him and Tensei. Fiddling with the golden amber crystal hanging around his neck, Naruto grimaced slightly. Tensei had given him everything he needed to know to live, to survive, to fight to protect. His grimace shifted from one of pain to one of determination. If he was going to protect what was his, he needed to be stronger. Stronger than he was now. Randomly recalling what his instincts had taught him back in Wave Country, Naruto knew he could come up with some kind of technique or use for the resin in combat. If he tried hard enough, he could do so many different things with it. He had training to do, and he just so happened to live in one of Konoha's largest and most dangerous training grounds that the village had to offer. Hissing quietly, Naruto extended his six dorsal tubes before rushing forward on all fours, his tail uncoiling from his waist to maintain his balance. Approaching her family's home, Shinobu could only grimace slightly and turn her eyes to the ground, her father standing on the front porch calmly with his hands in his pockets. She knew he wasn't happy about her absence, a few of his own kakechu were flying around him. Where have you been all night? Abu Rami Shaibi inquired stoically, though a hint of sternness was present in his tone. I was with my teammate, Naruto. Shinobu answered honestly as she walked up onto the porch, knowing it was pointless to try lying to him, she was a terrible liar, anyways. He lost his mother almost two months ago and has just now started the grieving process. He fell asleep while I was consoling him and I didn't have the heart to leave him. I wanted to make sure he would be okay before I left. Naruto, you say. Jenku Naruto. Shibi inquired, his voice sounding just a tad more curious than anything. Receiving a nod from his daughter, Shibi nodded his head slightly in return, mostly from his own thoughts. He knew about the unusual looking boy being part of the council as the Aburami clan head. Turning around, he opened the door to go inside. I see. Your dinner is in the refrigerator, if you're hungry. Try to get some sleep. You're not upset? Shinobu asked, honestly a little surprised. Any other time, she would have been grounded for at least a few days. Shibi glanced at her over his shoulder. Why would I be upset? He asked, surprising Shinobu even more. You were helping a friend. Shinobu could only stand there, staring at her father for a few seconds before sighing quietly, honestly a little relieved. She had been expecting some form of punishment for staying out so late, which was why she'd ask Naruto if she could come back later in the week and not the next day, like she had wanted. Following her father inside, they bid each other good night before her father went back to his room while she left her sandals by the door. Heading towards the kitchen, Shinobu collected her portion that had been saved from dinner and went to her room. Hanging her trench coat up beside her bedroom door, she sat on her bed with her legs crossed under her, quietly eating her dinner. Thinking about her night though, Shinobu couldn't help thinking about Haku and the kiss they'd shared, ironically enough. Well, kisses. Momentarily oblivious to how some of her kakechiwu had started crawling across her skin and flying around the room aimlessly in reaction to her emotions, Shinobu found herself only able to smile a little coyly as she took another bite of her food, which primarily consisted of steamed rice and various vegetables. For her first kiss, it was actually quite enjoyable, even if it had been with another girl. Cheeks warming up a little bit, she honestly hoped that it might happen again one day. Not too soon, but one day. As much as she had liked it, she was still a little confused about how she should feel about it. Finishing her dinner and setting the plate on her nightstand with the intent to wash it first thing in the morning when she woke up, she laid down on her bed, still thinking about it all. Naruto knew about her feelings for him now, both him and Haku had welcomed her into the hive, she'd spent the whole night essentially cuddling with her love interest, she'd had her first kiss, with another girl, at that, as relatively calm as her night had been, a lot had happened. Even though things had started off a little rough with Naruto's grieving, Shinobu could honestly say that she had enjoyed it and was happy with how everything had turned out in the end. Without even realizing it, she eventually drifted off to sleep with a smile on her lips, while dreaming of what life might be like living with the two hybrids. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.